This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space. Welcome back, everyone, finally for another season of the Ads and Dunks podcast, as always, exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces. My name is Adam, and of course, with me on the other line in Brisbane, sunny Brisbane, my best mate and dear friend, Joshy Dunkley. How are you going, mate? I'm going well, thanks, mate. Very excited to be back. It's been a long time between, and uh, yeah, just pumped about the new season and, and what we can bring to the table and for our fans, obviously, that's what we do it for. We do it for the fans and the people out there, our listeners. So very excited to uh, to be back, mate. Me too, mate. But um, for our uh, loyal listeners out there who we know will be tuning in at all the channels, um, this is actually our second time doing the first episode because me of, uh, uh, of the two of us, the one who is um, horrendous with technology and he's just getting older with age, stuffed up his mic situation. So we've just done 15 minutes of recording. Great content, by the way. And we've just had to start again. Yeah, unfortunately. It's always a case with you though. Like you were late to this one. <laughs> you you FaceTimed me to get the setup right because you've unplugged everything and I've just left mine all plugged in and I've got it all sorted and I'm waiting for you and you're just stuffing us around. Then we then we have to go back 15 minutes from recording, mate. Come on, you need to pick up your game. Episode one and this is already happening. I know Dunks is the organised one, and I'm the unorganised one, which will um, which is the way it's going to be forever. But um, no, well, mate, I love int- int- um, introing twice. It's uh, it's exciting for us, exciting <laughs> for our fans. Uh, I know you've got a uh, really exciting announcement to make uh, for all our fans right now because we can all see it with your hat that you've got on. Yes, I do, and we've got the shirts on too. We've uh, we're very proud to announce that we've picked up a new sponsor this year in Brooks Blooms. Um, so. For those that don't know, Brooks Blooms is a landscaping company up in Queensland. Uh, so unbelievable. They've actually been doing a little bit of my backyard of late and um, I'm sure we'll go into that a bit later. But very fortunate to have Brooke and the team on board and uh, we look forward to working with them throughout the year and um, into the future as well because we know that, you know, obviously our platform and, and working with them too and getting your fingernails dirty, mate, will be awesome to see. So Look forward to that that opportunity, and um, we're very thankful for their support. That we are, and you've seen me on the farm, so you know I'm quite handy. But um, I, I second that, mate. I second uh, the excitement that we have with Brooks Blooms on board. Um, we, we'll have an exciting new segment every week called Blooms of the Week, which we'll touch on a bit later, which we're really excited about. Um, but obviously, Brooke is her name. She is a wonderful human being. Uh, A mad Western Bulldogs fan for what it's worth, been a Bulldogs fan her whole life. She bleeds the red, white, and blue, so she clearly uh, clearly loved you um, probably that little bit more a couple of years ago when you were playing for the Bulldogs. But uh, in all seriousness, she has clearly an enormous soft spot for you. Her her second team is uh, is the Brisbane Lions. We all know that. But uh, if, you know, she said herself, if there was a grand final between us and the Brisbane Lions, when I say us, I mean the Western Bulldogs. We all know who she's going for. It doesn't matter where it is. She's going for the red, <laughs> white, and blue. So, um, But in all seriousness, mate, uh, both extremely excited. Um, she's an absolute superstar. You said she's done some work on your backyard. She does some great landscaping projects and, um, yeah, just an incredible person. So we're really excited about having her on board. But uh, we move on from that and touch on just our lives. How, uh, how are you going, mate? How's, uh, what's happened in the last – what six months since uh, you know since we haven't been doing this potty, which we've been counting down for? Oh, for me, a fair bit. I've been away, went to America, uh, did some did some pretty cool things over there, which a lot of people would have seen and spoke about on Tommy's um, podcast not long ago. So, yeah, that was a pretty cool experience. Went away over there to, initially to um, go to Christmas, albeit Christmas with Tipper's family in New York. So that was a pretty cool experience and. Um, was fortunate enough to get a couple of other experiences that a few people would be filthy about, I'm sure, uh, over here. So, yeah, it was a pretty awesome experience. And, yeah, obviously after that, coming back into preseason and, and working pretty hard to uh, the, the opening round this week. So looking forward to getting stuck in. That's great. And we were obviously able to see each other a few times, which was uh, extremely exciting. 
Um, it'd be extremely rude of me not to ask how Tip is going. Uh, she's obviously made that big move back to the Firebirds, so um, it's exciting. Clearly, there she's she's there with you now. Yeah, so we've got the house to ourselves, mate. We kicked everyone else out and have uh, we're living together for the first time, which is awesome. It's been great. Uh, sort of early days, have some teething issues. No, I'm kidding. It was pretty good, pretty smooth sailing. <laughs> Do sailing, um, mate. So love, absolutely loving it. And as I touched on, Brooke has done our backyard up, and we've we caught up early last year. Should mention it probably. It just and ever since then, she's been amazing, and she's set up our backyard exactly how we wanted it. And, um, yeah, so grateful for what she's done for us and the work she's done for us. So if anyone out there needs their backyard done, um, feel free to hit up Brooke Brooks Blooms because yeah. they do a fantastic job. That they do, and we um, a little bit a little bit more on Brooks Blooms. We were fortunately enough uh, invited to um, her belated Christmas party that she hosted for all her staff members, which was which is over 100 people. She's just an incredible person, Brooke. But she has this, I have to mention, this one staff member that uh, is one of the greatest people that I've met in terms of energy and the vibes that he brings. And his name is Herbie. We're giving Herbie a shout out. I got no doubt he'll be reposting this on his socials when he's up at two o'clock in the morning riding his riding his bike <laughs> that he rides every day for four hours. That's a that's a um, road bike for for the listeners out there. This isn't a motorbike; it's a road bike. Um, you know, he rides his bike every day four hours. He's the biggest eater I've ever met in my life. When Josh and I did our filming, which we haven't even touched on yet, so much to talk about. When we did our filming, we had our break. Josh and I had a sandwich each. Herbie had five sandwiches. In one sitting, which is just incredible. He could have eaten more too. Like it's insane. <laughs> yeah, he's just wonderful, and I and I've got no doubt. As I said, he'll be um he'll be shouting this out. Uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on, which you know, you know, with the mistake of stuffing up the first little intro that we did before, the beauty is I remember a few things to touch on, Joshy. So it's <laughs> smart. Um, one it's thing good. that we have thoroughly enjoyed over the last six months of. Uh, you know, just our time and our lives and, and getting together is we have really gotten into the horse racing and it's become quite a hobby of ours to the point where we're actually uh, part owners of a, of a horse that uh, we're obviously in. Yes, we are. We've got a couple. We've got one, we've got one with Brooke and yes, Tommy, which is, yes. a, which is uh, a Polo Ridge, I think its name is, and he's, he's currently in the paddock, so resting up and getting ready for a big year ahead. For the uh, for the podcast, so we're cheering we're cheering that one home um, throughout the season, and uh, the other one, yeah, with you and I is uh, the one down in Melbourne that you have you gone and checked him out yet? No, nah, when I was meant to go down, I obviously couldn't because Kimmy had her surgery on her back, so that's oh, another yeah. uh, that's another crazy thing that happened during. But no, I haven't been able to see our uh, our boy Lordship, who uh, is you know he he probably is number one in my heart. I mean, you, you mentioned Apollo Ridge and. You know, future horses that I'll have, but Lordship is the first horse that I've brought into. So, and to do it with you, mate, my best mate, I'm really, really excited to uh, to watch him run. He's had, I think he's had ten or so races over in in the UK. So, I um, am extremely excited, mate. He's, he's meant to be running next year, uh, next month. So, yeah, can't wait for that. Yeah, look forward to that, mate. It's a there's a few things going on that we've obviously done over the off season. So we'll keep everyone in in tune with with that as we go go on through the podcast but talk about you mate let's talk about you you've, you've asked me a couple of questions how have you been how's your how's your pre-season going um what have you been up to how's the family um yeah i'm going good mate i've uh pre-season's going well it's um my 14th pre-season so i'm feeling every bit of it being in my 14th it's um never gets any easier and um, although my teammates would probably suggest different because uh, there's an ongoing joke that I only ever seem to do training when match team comes out, but when there's all the other drills, I'm on the side <laughs> doing all my all rehab running, just getting ready for the match teams. And I know you've been saying that. You said that <laughs> the minute that. that you met me. So Cody Waitman, shout out to Cody because he always says that. Oh, Adzi, we know the match team's out because he's out in the drills. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's been a good uh, – well, between the last episode, it's been a good six months. Um Obviously, Kimmy is uh, is having another obviously year with the Firebirds. She gets to play with uh, your great, uh, beautiful partner Tipper, and obviously Lazi as well. And she's really excited about the year ahead. Georgie's almost four years old um, in a couple of weeks, which is just mind blowing, mate. Um, so you can have genuine conversations with her, as you know. You've you've obviously 
spent quite a bit of time with her. So, um, yeah, family's going good. I'm really excited for what the year lies, well, yeah, what lies ahead for us um, in this next year and um, and getting stuck into this podcast that we do every week. So, yeah, it's been a good six months for me. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, bit of a smoky, the Firebirds, I reckon, this year. They're at, they're their best is going to be very challenging for some teams. I know they played the sunny coast the other day when you were playing, mm. so you might not have mm. been able to watch it. But and Kimmy wasn't out there either, which is another big out for him. So they were challenging them in that in the first quarter. I think they actually won it by five or six. So um, going to be an interesting watch to see how the girls go this year. So we'll follow them closely as, it, as it, well. I could not agree more, mate. And I love the fact that we're both barracking now for the same team. Obviously, Tipper was able to experience. Yeah. Premiership success last year, and um, and I reckon at the the Thunderbirds this time last year was a a team that wasn't you no know, really spoken about in in being a team that was going to win it. So hopefully the Firebirds can replicate that and and obviously sweep uh, sweep it and win win the uh, the Premiership, um, mate. We can talk about so freaking much, but we probably should get stuck into uh, to our episode talking footy and and all the typical stuff we love talking. But before we talk footy. Uh, an exciting uh, competition that is about to uh, happen this week, clearly, because it's opening round, um, you know, technically the first games of this week. There's an Aces AFL tippy competition that is going ahead. Prizes will be a lead as always. There'll be signed jerseys from from the Western Bulldogs, signed jerseys from obviously your team, the Brisbane Lions, all your favourite players, Rick's Eyewear, which we absolutely love. Tommy loves uh, handing out the Rick's Eyewear, so there's going to be plenty of prizes there. Um, other prizes, we don't know yet what, that, what they'll be, but I'm no doubt they'll be unbelievable. Uh, all you got to do is jump on the link in the show notes, and more importantly, it is free. So make sure you join. It is free. Get as many people as we can. I know I'll be joining. Josh will be joining. We'll obviously be tipping the Bulldogs in Brisbane every week, but there'll be a little competition between us as there is in everything that we do. So I'm really excited about that. So make sure you jump on and, and jump into this AFL TV competition. Yep, for sure. Make sure you get on there and, and join us. It's going to be a fun ride, not only on the podcast, but in the tipping comp as well. So I look forward to getting stuck into that too. Um, I agree. Moving on, you said, talked about footy. Uh, let's talk about footy. It's been let's... a while. It's been a while. So let's uh, let's touch on the preseason. You talked about how you sort of just come out for match team and I completely agree with Cody with that one because you're uh, Every every single day that I talk to you, you're like, nah, 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 not feeling good enough, not feeling good enough. And <laughs> as soon as games roll around, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I'm feeling good now. I'm starting to, you know, hit my strides. And mate, the other day I watched you. I watched you in um, Launceston. You were in fine form. There's nothing wrong with you. You're flying. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because obviously when you get introduced back into match team. Um, you know, after not training, it's generally you know maybe a half or whatever. And the boys come, oh, what are you doing? You're playing only half. No, nah, full. The full game. I'm playing the whole game. I'm fine. I'm good. But um, you know, work smarter, mate, not harder. As you get older, you'll understand. Which you are getting older, for what it's worth. Um, you're not a uh, oh, young spring chicken anymore. Um, <laughs> but no, nah, no, nah, it's uh, it's it's been good. Boys have been good. Um, obviously, very very disappointed in the way that we ended um last year and not being able to play finals and. Um, with the group that we have, I feel like we've got a really exciting group. Um, that covers you know. You know, most positions on the ground, we've got some, obviously, people talk about how, how good our, our midfield, um, obviously, players are, led by Bont and Lieber and, and Riley Sanders, who I could spend 50 minutes talking about on, on another potty about how unbelievable and incredible he's been so far. But, um, you know, the most pleasing thing for me um, is that the boys have come back with such a hunger and a want to, yeah, to, to just want to improve and get better and um, not worry about, you know, any outside noise or whatever it may be and just in, stick with the plan that we have and that's obviously how we want to play and and how we attack each game. So, yeah, it's been a, a very pleasing preseason. It's, it's always better when we get to games. We've had um, two really good hit outs, one against um, Hawthorne in a unofficial practice match, which was, um, you know, really pleasing for, for us to be able to play both Box Hill and Hawthorne because we've had a really fit and healthy list. And then obviously last week, down in Launceston, we're able to play Hawthorne in the official practice game, which, you know, barring some accuracy issues, I felt like, yeah, it, it was a, you know, a really good stepping stone for us against Melbourne in, in a, uh, you know, obviously, obviously in 10 days' time. So, or well, maybe a little bit more, 11 days. So, yeah, it's been a really good preseason. Really looking forward to seeing how the boys go, you know, come round one for us. But um, 
yeah, I'm I'm extremely excited and very optimistic about the year ahead. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, one thing I do want to touch on, actually, after, after I did watch you on the weekend, and it sort of pisses me off a little bit, I shouldn't say that, it annoys me when I watch the footy, is when the commentators, they're talking about the Bulldogs midfield, right? In the third quarter, you probably had one of the best quarters out of everyone, but mm. they were just saying Font and Libba. That's the only two blokes they were talking about. So if any commentators listen to this, make sure <laughs> you think about Adam Chalor because he needs to get some raps. You were dominating, mate, absolutely yeah. dominating. And I was like, how are these blokes not talking about you? How are oh, the commentators thanks, not talking about you? So I just want to give you a little little pump up. No, early pump up. I, I love it, mate. We – um. I can never uh, take those for granted, but no, I appreciate it, mate. It's um, you know, the typical answer. I just love doing what's what's required of me for the team, and if that is uh, you know, whatever it may be, I'm happy. But um, we'll move on from me, mate. Always get a little bit un- awkward and uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> so let's move on from me, and we'll talk about uh, the Brisbane Lions and you. Um, yeah, obviously, probably, well, definitely a disappointing way to end. Obviously, you uh, had high hopes and. Um, ended up losing by a kick in the granny, which was, for what it's worth, one of the great grand finals that I've ever watched, probably the best grand final I've ever watched. And I was there, obviously, with your family. And, um, yeah, it was a, an incredible day, but obviously a sad day for you guys. How have, you know, how have, have you gone, um, you know, attacking this preseason? How have the guys gone? You know, uh, did you review the game? If so, how much did you review? How much do you take into it? Um, how much does that motivate you? going forward into this now season where I think unanimously and rightfully so, you guys are probably the favourite, you know, the early favourite to win the Premiership. I've seen a poll, I think yesterday on SCN maybe, where there was 13 out of obviously, well, 18, 13 people picked you to win the grand final um, and be Premier. So, you know, do you look into that? Do you guys, uh, how how are you coping with the external expectation if there is any, if there is any noise around um, you guys. I've got so many questions for you, mate. But, um, yeah, just uh, fill us all in on how you're feeling and how the boys are going. Yeah, it's a, looking back now, it's probably not a day that you you want to think about. But I, I think the way we've sort of dealt with it was pretty good. Um, you know, Fag's got us all in the Wednesday after the grand final and pretty much we just laid it all out on the floor. There was a lot of, you know, moments throughout the grand final that many players would like to have back, me included. Uh if I'm being honest, you know, for me, it was the the moment when I slipped over in the centre bounce and Geordie to go. He ends up kicking the goal and had a little bit of a roll on him at stoppage on the day. And um, for him to kick a goal to put him back in front, that will that'll forever haunt me until such time as hopefully, you know, we get back there and the roles are reversed and we win one. But yeah, moments like that we sort of talked about and. Um, yeah, I think that drove a lot of us, you know, at the time. It was like, geez, we want to get back in straight away and, and play again next week. But we had 10 weeks to rest and recover and get surgery. And um, for me, I had a thumb rico and had a pinky tendon that I tore in the grand final. So it was looking after my hands, which was a bit of a pain, but nice to be back functioning well now. Um, but, yeah, a lot of guys went away, got their stuff done and came back in. I thought it, last year was in good nick. Uh, this year was probably even even better and another step forward again. So you can tell that a meeting like that that we had and the motivation levels were extremely high and, and are still there to to go one better next year and um, hopefully we can be better, be better in those moments and learn from the experience that we had because it's going to hold us in really good set, I think, in, in the bigger games but across all games throughout the season because we do all start 0-0 and uh, I look forward to hopefully – you know, putting our best foot forward this year and and doing our fans proud. I know they were there on the day, and a lot of them were really proud of us on the day. But it's like, geez, we you can't be proud mm. if you if you don't take it out. So if you're there, you want to be winning it. You don't want to be losing it. That's two for me now that I've lost and um, I've won one. So I've got to get it back on the other side, mate. Yeah, no, I uh, I know the feeling of losing, mate. Trust me. Um, but I guess we'll move on to. Well, this week, you know, there's footy this week. We're back. You're back. Obviously, we're we're another week away, but you're back playing in in three. What is it? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days. So clearly, you must be that excited. The fact that footy's back. I mean, it's gone like this, and we're and we're already here. Um, you guys have been ultra impressive in your two games that you you played. One against the Gold Coast, and then obviously, which was the unofficial game, and then obviously in Sydney. 
for what it's worth in 40 degree weather, which looked absolutely horrendous to be out there. Um, but yeah, you looked, you know, you guys looked uh, in great, Nick. You looked like you're ready to attack the season and um, you get a great opportunity against, you know, a team again like last year. Clearly surprised a lot of teams um, from the midpoint onwards, you know, when they weren't going overly well at the start of the year, which we clearly backed um, we backed them in because their fans were giving it to them. In, in Carlton is clearly who I'm talking about. You must be excited about, you know, one, you're coming up against a team that is going to be around the mark come finals time um, in your first game. And two, the fact that, you know, playing for premiership points is actually back. Yeah, we probably should talk about opening round first. It's... Uh... It's great that I think that the AFL have, have brought it up to the northern states and they're giving us the opportunity to play or well, to open the season, really. Um, and like you said, we're playing against the Blues, who we've got some really good history against, um, some cracking games of football. And the last one was one that, have, yeah, it was an incredible experience, that whole that whole game. The way that it all transpired was just insane. Like the way the first quarter was, was so far down and then to come out on top was yeah, just an incredible uh, experience. So look forward to playing them on Friday night. I know a lot of people are talking them up too. So it's going to be hopefully a cracking game of footy. Um, and, yeah, just really excited to open up the season up in Brisbane, mate. So I know you'll be watching and a lot of fans out there will be too. So really look forward to that opportunity. Yeah, mate. I'm uh, extremely pumped to, to watch her. Is there – I know it's really early to say this because there has been no footy played – any roles for you specifically maybe this round, maybe a Paddy Cripps or I don't think Sam Walsh is playing, but, you know, there may be a, a, a stoppage role, whatever it may be, or you can't give away too much. No, nah, I think everyone always talks about me going to Cripper all the time. So it's probably safe to say that we'll see a bit of each other throughout the night. Um, I don't think that's going to be any surprise to anyone, but it, it's, not a, it's never been a tagging kind of role. No. It's just been more of a role that, you know, you can – Work off each other, and because um, he's so dominant for him in that, in the you know inner circle of all the contested footy, like he's one of the best players in the competition when it comes to contested ball, and and as a player as a whole. So you've got to be mindful of those good players, and like you're one of those when we come against uh, up against the dogs and and Bont and Liber and guys like that. So it's uh, something that potentially might play out throughout the night, depending on how both teams are going and how we're going um, as a collective too. So look forward to. Whatever roles come my way, uh, hopefully, mate, I can get forward and kick a few more goals this year. That'd be nice. Yeah, we got to do the ace, the ace of celebration, which I won't, uh, which I won't forget. We're making a promise now. If you kick a goal, you've got to do it. First goal of the year, you've got to do it. Making a promise yeah. right now, so you better not forget if you do it. Um, but no, nah, it's exciting. I'm, uh, I'm jealous. I'm very jealous that I'm not out there playing. But I'll, um, I'll be super pumped for you as always. I go for. Obviously, the Brisbane Lions are new outside of us, so I'll be watching, barracking hard. Um, I guess that's a little good segue into something that we love doing, which is our predictions for the year. Um, and our predictions, obviously, the Brownlow, Coleman, Rising Star, and then we'll do – can't do premiers because I obviously think the Bulldogs, you think the Brisbane Lions. We'll do a sneaky top eight um, chance and then – yeah, we'll give our we'll give ours. I'll give mine. You give yours, and then we'll see how we go. And actually, for what it's worth, can't be can't be a Brisbane player. So sorry, mate. You can't say Lockie Neal. And yeah, that's right. I can't say obviously Bont, which he probably will win the Brownlow, but I'm not going to say Bont. So give me yours first, mate. We'll start. No, no, we'll go Brownlow last because that is pretty cool. So we'll go sneaky top eight first. Sneaky top eight. I'm going to go. I don't know if it's sneaky. Like, there's a few teams in. I think you guys, like, for me, are going to be well and truly in the top eight. I feel like your best footy is capable to beat anyone. Um, so that's not really sneaky. Uh, mm-hmm. Adelaide, oh, I think Adelaide will be in the eight, but that's probably my sneaky one. I don't think it's sneaky, but I feel like everyone else out there does. So I'll go with Adelaide. Yeah, oh, mate. Like, all great minds, you read my mind. So I was going to say Adelaide too, but I kind of don't want to say him now because you said it. I'm going to I'm going to jump on board the ooh, the Dimmer Hardwick train and say maybe the Gold Coast Suns for the first time in their obviously franchise they make the top 8 which would be pretty cool pretty cool for the AFL if they obviously make the top 8 so that'll be my pick rising star mate for you now nah, you go first for this one okay so I I clearly can't say Riley Sanders who by the way 
our, uh, our ads and dunks fans out there, this guy is something special. He is a gun. He is very, 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 very good. He's one of the most impressive 18-year-olds I've ever seen come in the system. And you guys clearly got a taste of how good he is in, in the game on the weekend that he played. Um, so, yeah, look out for him. So I clearly can't say him. So, ooh, you know what? I'm going to jump on the Harley Reid hype train too and just say Harley Reid. Well, I'll say I'll say Riley Sanders. I watched him on the weekend and I think he's going to be a gun player. Um, still got plenty to learn as, as all young players do and as we do as older players too. So, um, But I just saw a lot of things that I'm like, geez, he's going to be that type of player that's going to shine and, and everyone's going to get around him. So look forward to seeing his uh, progression and development unfold. Great answer, mate. Coleman medal. I always say, I reckon every year I always say like it's going to be a small forward and then a tall forward ends up winning it. So I love small forwards, um, but I'm going to go with the tall. I think I think Jeremy Cameron's going to win it again. It's a good answer. Yeah, it is a hard one. Can't go my teammate because I'd love to see Naughty or Mara win it. I will say Nick Lucky. I'll say Nick Lucky because – he kicks a lot of goals in a team the last couple of years that haven't won as many games as obviously, you know, Coleman Millis wins. So if which I think they will be a, a good side this year that wins a lot more games than they did last year. I reckon that gives him a great chance to kick a lot more bags and and absolutely, you know, dominate some games. So I'm gonna say him for the Coleman. Uh the Brownlow medal. Here we go. For me, it depends on how the votes are done again like whether they get to see stats or not, because I think this guy is a genuine player. Uh, he's from Adelaide and it's Jordan Dawson. I think he does he does everything on the field that you can think of, but at times he probably doesn't get, like he's, he's not the flary type. He just gets his job mm. done, but he does everything on the field. And he's one that I think should be up there for talking about, if you're, if you're talking about the Brownlow medal, because I think he does it all. That is a great answer. Jordan Dawson, that is a – yeah. Yeah, look, I think he'll be up there. See, it's so hard not to say Bont because I see this guy go to work and he's an absolute superstar and he's flying again. If you watched his game on the weekend, obviously he was flying. Mate, I've given the most obvious answers. I'm going to say Nick Dacos. Oh, yeah. That's an easy one. I know you're going to say that, but sometimes the easy ones just win, mate. You know, like no, – like Mr. Bright, like. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Mr. Brightside and Alligator Blood and, you know, <laughs> Imperatories this Saturday. Um, but sometimes the obvious answer is is right there and they're going to win a lot of games. And if he didn't get injured last year, arguably he, you know, was right up there in the brown low. So, Nick yeah. Dacos for me. No, nah, I like it. I like it. I think uh, the old black and white stripes are coming back out in you. Um, but no, it's a it's a great call. He's one of the best players in the comp, and we all know it. So, um, all the best to those guys that we've just mentioned and the teams, um, or every team, I guess, moving forward. It's a it's a cracking year, and everyone's looking forward to it. So, can't wait to to get stuck in. Or mate, what I actually want to ask you a question. What do you What are your thoughts? So, would you lo- obviously you'd love to be playing this week, but you've got two weeks between when you last played in your first game. Would mm. you want to be playing? right now, like us, this week. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I understand the marquee games, which is great. I think it's I think it's wonderful that all the games are oh, – no, there's no game in Melbourne, clearly, but yeah, I think it's great for Sydney. It's clearly great for Queensland, having a Gold Coast game as well and and then yep. obviously having you boys play. Um, but, yeah, to give you the simple answer, yeah, I'd love to be playing. I, I think you can make – like you can make a marquee game with pretty much every team. Like every team has a, I guess, a particular rival. And I know there's rivalry round and whatnot, but yeah, I, I just, I'm envious. I wish I was running out there. I, 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 um, I'm jealous. I'm really jealous like most of our boys are. So I, I like the round. I love the idea of the round, but I wish I was out there. So would you say like openly, how many games would you be able to play during a year? Because I, I'm of the opinion that our last two games that we've played, right, we're playing full games. We're, we're, it's a, not a practice game. It's a genuine game against an opposition. Why can't mm. those be for four points? Yeah, no, I agree. 
I agree. And, and in this day and age, we do enough match simulation and internal yeah. trials to to get us up and about for a game. No, it's a fair call, mate. Maybe you take it up with take it up with the bosses or the powers to be, and, and <laughs> see what happens. Maybe next year we can start. It is a bit weird because, um, again, for our uh, wonderful fans out there, I'm turning 31 on Saturday, so it's my birthday. And typically each year, my birthday falls on either the week or the weekend of the last practice match. So yeah. the fact that this year is falling on a, an actual round, uh, like I, I agree with what you're saying. You may as well just bring the the you know the season forward and, and make playing games – like make a uh, uh, play for a purpose or whatever it may be. So who knows? You know, I'd love to be involved, but um, you know, when you're uh, when when you have a quality of game as as these four games, you know, have, which we may as well get into them. We may as well, you know, make our tips before we do our sponsored segment of the week that we're going to do every single week, which I can't wait for, which is the bloom of the week. I want to. Yep. Firstly, do our tips so we can move on to the bloom of the week, blooms of the week. Uh, the four games. So we've got the D's and the Swans opening um, at the SCG, which is in two days, which, yeah, again, I can't wait for. My tip, I'm going to say Sydney. I think they're very, very hard to beat in Sydney. I don't think that's going to change this season for them. And really excited to see how Brody Grundy goes in his new colours. Obviously, James Jordan's there. Taylor Adams, unfortunately, hurt himself, but I'm excited to see how he goes. I feel like they've picked up some good players, and I reckon they're going to be a really good team as well this season, as the Ds will be as well. But my pick is Sydney. Who do you think? I'm going to go against you with the Ds on that one just because I feel like the Swans mm-hmm. have got a few key outs in their team that aren't going to be back. Like Parker, Adams, as you mentioned, Mills is out. Um, yeah, I just think the Ds might stretch them a little bit in the midfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's one. There's already the tipping competition, guys. We've gone one against each other, which I love. The Blues and Lions. Uh, well, we've already touched. We've already touched on that game a little bit. You're obviously tipping the Lions. I'm. I'm going to tip the Lions as well. So we'll move on from that one. Uh, the Tigers and the Suns. Damian Hardwick's obviously first game as a Gold Coast um, coach versus his old team. Uh, well, I'll I'll let you start. Who do you think is going to win that? I don't know. That's a hard one. First up, uh, I'll go with the Suns. I think there's going to be a bit of a storyline around it. Uh, they haven't played overly well through their last couple of games, and I reckon they're going to come out in round one firing and, and yeah, go well against the Tigers, Dimmer's old Tigers. So, and that's, I think that's the thing. Like, you know, when the coach leaves and, you know, Sean Griggs at the Gold Coast as well, who's been at Richmond before, I know they've got a new coach, but. There's still things, little habits of players that you know you can take across and be like, right, I have to shut this guy down. You got to do this. So there's going to be little games going on within a game, and yeah, it's going to be a pretty, pretty fun one, fun one to watch. Yeah, I agree, mate. I, I reckon the Suns will, will get them at home, which is um, an exciting game. Really, really happy for for Queensland getting those two games, um, and then obviously the round out the opening round, which will be an absolute blockbuster of a game. The Pies v the Giants. Uh, cannot wait for this game. Um, there's definitely a, a little bit of a, a rivalry heating up between these two teams, um, which coincidentally is my my two old teams, which is pretty pretty funny. But um, <laughs> yeah, I oh, it's hard because the Pies are so good. Um, I Howie's think the out. Giants. I know Howie's out, which sucks. I um, we love Howie. He's a he's a big fan of our potty. Um. So uh, he'll be back hopefully the following week. But I, I think the Giants at home, um, I think they'll want to make a statement, you know, where they start the season off really well. Um, they've obviously had a really good preseason in their games they've played. So I've Collingwood as well. Um, but I just think the Giants at home um, will get a good crowd and I reckon they might be a little bit too good for Collingwood. But it would not surprise me if it's the other way and the Pies are just way too good. So, but I'm going to pick the Giants. Who do you think? Yeah. I'm going to agree with you. I think there's actually a lot going on between these two teams. And although it seems to be like tongue in cheek, deep down, it's not tongue in cheek. It's like, it's genuine. It's building to be genuine, um, a genuine rivalry. So, but I think the Giants too, I think they're, that was stiff to, um, to not get them last year in that prelim. I feel it. And they, they'd be feeling that. So yeah, I reckon they're going to get a bit of redemption this, this Saturday. Saturday is it? 
Saturday oh, night, I think. So it'll be uh, a ripper game. Cannot wait to watch that. Uh, maybe that's what I'll do on my birthday night. Sit down and watch my two old clubs go out, the Pies and the Giants. Cannot wait. Um, <laughs> I know I touched on the bloom of the week. One more thing with footy before we get to the blooms of the week. Uh, you know, whether you're a dream team or a super coach, you know, person, personally, I'm not. But I think it's worthwhile talking um, uh, for you guys in particular because I've already mentioned Riley Sanders. Talking about a young player or players at your footy club who you think is going to have a really, really big year, who might exceed expectations or who might live up to expectations. Um, if you're a super coach, you know, player, maybe take in one of these players. But if you just love footy in general, who is or who are some players at the Brisbane Lions who you reckon will, will make a big step? Uh, a couple of young fellas that I think are going to take a big step this year that have been in the system. Kai Lohman is one, and mm-hmm. and Harry Sharp is another. But those two boys have been really good, and I feel like will feature. They should, or yeah, I feel like they will feature early on in the season. A um, couple of little X Factor ones: uh, Brandon Ryan, Sticks Ryan from Hawthorne. I feel like he might end up playing a role for us at some point. And a draftee in Logan Morris. He's going to mm-hmm. be. He's just got, you know, when you look at a player or you see him out on the track and you're like, he's just got this, I don't know, it's like a persona about him and the way that he gets around and jumps to the footy, you're just like, he's going to be a good player for us. So he's one potentially that I'd be looking to invest in if I was part of the uh, the super coach or dream team community. What about you? Yeah, I like it. Obviously, Riley Sanders mentioned before, he's going to be an absolute superstar. A couple that i got for you, Harvey Gallagher, He's uh, into his second season now, um, one of the most uh, powerful uh, kids that, you know, he's only 19, I think, or 20 maybe, one of the most powerful kids I've ever come across, probably the most powerful. Um, he wins, you know, all of our jumping records and, and all this speed and whatever. Um, you got a little taste of him on the weekend in, in our, you know, both our games that we've played. Um, you know, he's got uh, a lot of X Factor and he's um, – you know, he, he's a talent. He's one to watch out for. And another one that um, I'm really excited about, and he's not necessarily a young player, but he's very um, inexperienced in terms of games play, but he's been around for a bit, and that's Buku Kamis, who has yep. been around um, for, I think, five of the five or six seasons now. Um, one Thaggy, that's what I call him, One Thaggy. He, uh, we call each other One Thaggy because uh, little, I had an appearance out in One Thaggy, and he thought it was a made-up name. He you said had an to appearance me, in one thaggy. Yeah, had an appearance in one thaggy uh, last hey, that's year with Lathy and territory. I know, mate, with Lathy and Cody, and he overheard us talking, and he thought I was making up the name one thaggy. He didn't think it was a real place. So ever since oh. then, I call him one thaggy. He calls me one thaggy. So one thaggy Karmas, Buku, Buku one thaggy Karmas. Um, he's he's yeah. I feel like he's going to have a really really big year. He's um had a. a, a Tremendous preseason. His aerial ability is, is such a highlight for him. He reads the play really well, and, and he's actually a really beautiful kick of the footy um, when he gets an opportunity to kick it. So he's one for me that um, I'm really excited about um, this year. But then again, I'm mentioning Riley Sanders for the 50th time. He's a superstar. Um, that's all we've got for footy. Moving on to our... You know, this will end up being our favorite, well, our segment of the week, but the favorite thing of the week. We are, we're going to do our, obviously, our, our sponsored segment of the week, which is the Bloom of the Week, the Brooks Bloom of the Week, as always brought to you by Brooks Blooms, which is basically what we did last year where, you know, we shine the line or light on someone or something that stood out. doesn't have to be footy specific, can be, you know, and, and knowing you and obviously knowing me, it probably won't ever be footy specific because we love delving into other sports. Um. Yeah, it's going to be our weekly uh, little segment that we're excited about, and um, can't wait to kick off this week. And we're going to start with you because you told me prior to the show that you're really, really okay. excited about this bloom of the week. So I cannot wait to hear what it is because I genuinely don't know what it is. Oh, I am excited about this one. It's it's got to do with footy, but I'm going to make it like uh, I'm going to go to an effort to make sure that these aren't about footy from my point of view because I want it to be okay. more about life and things that pop up, things that you might see or whatever. So I'm going to start off, and it's to do with the first game last week. Did you see the avocado man eating an avocado oh, on the sideline? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so he, 
he is my bloom of the week because, you know, oh. bloom, garden, it grows on a tree. Avocado, man, he's mine. I can't top that. Wow, we I applaud you. <laughs> for, what it's, for what it's worth, I actually hate avocado like – by, like avocado by itself. I have to have it like a smashed avo, which has feta and salt and pepper, but an actual avocado makes me like gag, mate. I hate it. And when I was watching him doing oh. that, I, wow, that is, that is, I, I actually don't want to do my bloom of the week because that is nothing <laughs> like that. Well done. You've actually oh. rocked me there. But I, um, oh, well done, mate. My, my bloom of the week is, the first bloom of the week is uh, we're going to um, head over to the States. It's going to be one of our great sports that we love, which is the NBA. Um, the second greatest player of all time, and uh, I I say that because I love Michael Jordan, the greatest player of all time, and I'm very, 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 very biased towards Michael Jordan. If I wasn't so biased, I would probably say Le- LeBron James, who I'm clearly mentioning, is the best player of all time. He's surpass 40,000 points, which obviously has never been done before. It, it speaks to his longevity and volumes towards how he is as a player. But the fact that someone in our generation, and you know, it might not ever happen again, but the fact that someone in our generation who we've both been able to watch, I've been able to watch him live and you know, see how incredible of an athlete he is, he is for him to pass 40,000 points, I cannot see why that could not be the bloom of the week, but now I can because of you and the avocado man. But that is my <laughs> uh, that is my bloom of the week. Yeah, I can't. I actually had. I saw a picture of when it you know forty thousand LeBron, and then the next, and he's already in that time. I looked at it. He's already gone past by like twelve hundred or some something mm. like it was. I think mm. it was over a thousand already in that time. And it's yeah. like, mate, you did that. He did that last year, didn't he? Yeah, he did last year. And, yep, and against Oklahoma. And the thing is, he ain't slowing down. That's the thing. Like he's, there was talks about him re-signing for a, a like it was like this max two-year deal. Yeah, max deal. Yeah. Max deal, which you know, which is just incredible. When you watch him play, like he, oh mate, it is it is just beyond me about how his longevity and how good he is. But um, what a what a joy it is to watch him. I, I do want to mention. I said I was going to do this, but. I, I, I told Brendan Lade I was going to do this. So Brendan Lade is, is obviously my midfield coach, um, you know, at uh, the Western Bulldogs. A tremendous career. He actually got inducted into the Port Adelaide Hall of Fame. So congratulations, Lady. Oh, he's, he's a great man. He did. He did. He's a, um, yeah, he's an absolute champion. Um, he, I was talking about obviously the podcast. We had a, we had a nice little mids dinner prior to this and, um, I was telling him about the, you know, the exciting Brooks Bloom of the Week, which we're excited about, and he threw it out there, suggesting he should be the Bloom of the Week for what he did once in his footy career. And I was like, oh, what was this? I don't know if you've seen this, mate, but this is absolutely hilarious. And I know that Brado is going to do a wonderful job cutting this up. Lady in a game. Do you remember? Do you do you ever remember watching Brendan Lade play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was, you know, quite aggressive and and can be aggressive towards the man. Do you remember the play where? I think it was Kale Morton for Melbourne. I think he must have done some biff with Lady and he goes up to Lady to confront him. Lady turns around to confront him back and then Kale Morton starts sprinting off as Lady starts chasing him. And do you know what it reminds me of? Do you know the scene in Happy Gilmore when I believe that belongs to Mr. Gilmore? Do you know that guy with the – you don't know movies, mate. So there's no way you don't know nah. this. But all our listeners out there will know this. There's a guy in Happy Gilmore who has the nail in his head. He's about, you know, eight foot 100, whatever however big he is, starts chasing Shooter McGavin. That's what it reminds me of, Brendan Lade chasing Shooter McGavin. So there you go, lady. I'm giving you your little spotlight. Hopefully, Brado does a good job cutting this up so I can show him because I actually know his boy listens to our potty. Boy, his boy loves our podcast. So a little shout out to lady. I said I'll do that. But um, yeah, really excited for for uh, the bloom of the week as we get the season going, and can't wait to see some rippers that we have. Yep, same here, mate. Same here. You're taking the words out of my mouth. Um, but that's it. That's our first one done. I don't think there's anything else on the agenda or things we've got to talk about. We'll have to get the fans involved um, soon enough to throw in some questions. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in. First one back for the year, and uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and comment on YouTube whatever it might be on the socials. We all 
we all see it. We may not say that at times, but we all see the, the feedback that you give us. Um, so please be nice if, uh, if you feel like giving us some feedback. But all, all feedback's taken on board. So, um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be back every Wednesday night from 7 p.m. every week for the, for the next all, until the grand final, essentially. So thanks again for tuning in to the Ads and Dunks podcast, and we look forward to another year, Adsy. That we do. Thanks, guys. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Brooks Blooms, your all-in-one landscaping solution. Brooks Blooms' three-step landscaping experience offers a seamless journey from design to construction and ongoing care, ensuring your outdoor space thrives year-round. Visit brooksblooms.com today to embark on your landscaping journey where every step is a step towards a vibrant and beautiful outdoor entertaining space.